Thank you for joining and welcome to How to Modernize Legacy Infrastructure with Content Collaboration. And truly, thank you for coming. With a title as dry as this, right after lunch, I really appreciate all of you being here today. I'm Crystal Rice DeVito. I'm a Senior Product Manager for Content Collaboration. And I'm joined by my colleague, Nathan Moat, who's a Product Marketing Manager. However, Nathan's actually on vacation right now. So why don't we go ahead and check in on Nathan, who's currently enjoying his life without modernized content. How good is the beach? So good. Crystal, crystal. That's, that's never good. That's never good. Oh, no. What does she want now? Here we go. I've been pinging you on Slack. I know. I'm on vacation. What is it today? She knows I'm on vacation. She approved the PTO. I need your help. Yep, I know. I know you do. What's going on? Ah, oh, speech bubbles. Here we go. Can you get on Slack? I would rather not, but yeah. Yep, sure. Let's go ahead and uh, let's jump over to Slack. Seven messages. Yeah, this is going to be good. Here we go. That's the wrong one. Uh, wrong aim again. Yeah, that's the better one. Nate. She keeps calling me Nate. She does. My name's Nathan as well. That's a bit fun. Um, fire drill. I know you're on vacation. Yes, you do. Mission critical. Everything is mission critical, is it not? Yet to have anything that is actually NASA mission critical. Uh, presentation from last week. Let me think. Can I not wait until I get back next week? The Cayman Islands. Pretty nice. Just a no. Just a flat no. Okay. Great <laughs> flexibility here shown by the boss. Uh, review with DLS. The boss is boss. Totally get that. Okay. I need to get back to my room, which is <laughs> not on the beach. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back to my room and I'll, I'll go ahead and message you the document when you get it then. Alrighty. That was short lived. After a few mojitos, we'll see how this goes. All right. This is good. This is what you want to do on your vacation. Perfect. Cool. And I'll go ahead and start logging in. Remote desktop, always fun. Let's see if this works. Eureka, that's good. All right, let's go ahead and find this file. I think I've got it in that shared network folder. There it is. Cool. All right, I'll go ahead and get on the mail. Wonderful uh, VPN while you're on vacation. And that really pleasant AC noise you're hearing in the background. This would be a miracle if I get the password right after a couple drinks. Go ahead and be at the end on this one. Okay. Yep, yep, that's never worked first time. Oh, it actually did, it actually did. If only I had an audience to see that actually worked on the first time. Go ahead and send that email to Crystal. Such a fun uh, work process. Go ahead and start clicking away. Here's the file you needed. Let's go ahead and uh, find that file, drop it in. Drag and drop, the spinning wheel of death, always fun. Just a short prayer to the uh, data gods to see if this actually goes through. Uh, actually, yep, that's over um, That's over 15 meg. That's going to come back at me. That's not going to be good. Maybe, it'll, no, it's not going to sneak through. I probably we're going to have to cancel this email. Go ahead and discard this one. I'm going to go ahead and compress that file, uh, which is ridiculous that I still have to compress files. It is 2019 after all, I think. Um, Go ahead and get to that explorer. And here, let's right click. Let's send to a compressed file. I always found that a bit of a strange instruction. I'm not sure why I have to send it to a compressed file. Let's go ahead and drag and drop. That one didn't work. Try again. Crystal Rice of Buto. Been told off about that a few times. Not Buto. Buto. File requested. Here's that file you needed. 
go ahead and write the email for the second time. Let's go ahead and drag this one in. Of course, didn't take the first time I drag it in. Let's go ahead and drag it in again. Of course, it didn't work the second time either. I think I might order room service and get a drink during this because this is definitely taking enough time. For the love of all that is holy, can we please work on this next try? Let's go ahead and drag that. And spinning, spinning, spinning. Hopefully I'll get a knock at the door soon, take the edge off this vacation fun. We're all in it together at this stage, folks. Go ahead. Marriott's got good Wi-Fi, but I don't think it's that good. Maybe we need to become elite status to get that enhanced Wi-Fi. I think I'm silver, not yet quite gold. Go ahead and send that. Cool, all right, that's done, thank. Thank you very, very much that that's over with. Go ahead and let her know. Get back on Slack. Crystal, thanks for the interruption. It's been a blast. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Why is she still typing? Please stop typing. Oh, the full version of the images. <laughs> of course she does. Of course she wants the full version. Let's go and find that one. I think I've actually put that one in Dropbox, though, because I had to work on that one when I was at home, um, because work didn't provide me with any, uh, any easy way that I can get my work done from home with uh, unlimited file storage in collaboration with other teammates. I'm going to have to log into Dropbox. And uh, if we thought it was a miracle before that I managed to get my password right on the first time, go and uh, probably request a sainthood if I can get the password right in the second one, because this is definitely going to be a miracle. Go ahead and sign in. Verification, that's nice and safe. This is different. Spinning ball, haven't seen that before. At least it's not that picture one that you do on the other ones where the picture changes and you're just playing roulette at that stage. Go ahead and just share this link. It's nice when you get these uh, cloud services, we can just create a link, head back to that manage, uh, head back to that virtual desktop. Go ahead and email it across to Crystal here. Almost there, please, please let this be the end of it. This vacation isn't paying for itself. I'll go ahead and send that one off. Get back on the last Skype chat. Dropbox, I know, I know. Well, don't be mad at me, be mad at yourself because you're still making me use these kind of tools. And that should just about wrap this up. Cool. All right, how painful was that? I mean, that was super painful. We lost an audience member. That was so painful. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, how many people did that resonate with? Have, have you guys ever been taken away from the middle of your vacation from your kid's soccer game? Because something is happening at work and you need to work immediately. So you need to pull out your laptop and you need to do things. How many of you still VPN to access your network file shares? Show of hands. Yeah. That's about right. How many of you are still using regular email to send your files? And how many of you have been hit by that file size limitation? And yeah. how much does that burn? Yeah, it doesn't feel good. So how did we get here? Why don't we talk about that? Yeah. Got that clicker from you. Cool, yeah. So that is a really good question. And it's one that just is it's a really good question we've had a lot this week because the hands we've seen, it's pretty prominent. It's a pretty good, um, pretty good problem that we've had. And I've been in the booth um, most of this week, so I've actually chatted with a few folks. And there really is that noticeable disconnect between like, the latest and greatest software tools, cloud services that are all out in the market, between what we're actually tethered to with these legacy systems. Um, and really, we have to understand that legacy systems do exist for a reason. We know that um, they house some of the most critical workloads and data that we've got. And particularly some of that data, um, and applications can't, 
be so quite easily migrated to where we want them to actually go. Um, and secondary to that, we're also looking at the notion of regulation and compliance um, that prevent a lot of these workloads, a lot of these applications, a lot of these data and content from being um, harnessed and used in public cloud. So uh, I know a lot of folks here are um, utilizing uh, virtual machines. So Gartner actually thinks that about 80% of, uh, um, of active virtual machine loads are still housed within that private infrastructure. So by all accounts, um, this noticeable tether that we have to um, these legacy systems and this modernized content that we're trying to get to today, it still very much exists and it's still pretty prominent today. So Crystal's gonna give us a bit of an overview on what we're gonna chat about today and I promise you there's not gonna be any more painful demos like that. <laughs> What we want you to get out of this session is that you are not alone. All of you that raised your hands and said, we still have all of our files on-prem and we are VPNing to access this, you are absolutely not alone. So while these sessions are getting you excited about moving to the cloud and having this intelligent workspace, we understand that we still need to provide something for you to help you today. So we're gonna talk about the legacy infrastructures, what do they look like today, how do we get there, and talk about the cost of it. Whether you realize it or not, having legacy infrastructure is extremely costly, but we can use content co collaboration and modernize it without moving that data to save you money and try, we're gonna try to get you jazzed about addressing the costs and the failures of your legacy infrastructure. And with that, we're gonna talk about the core values that we bring to the workspace, and of course, that's with flexibility with choice, we're gonna highlight security and the user experience we're trying to avoid of Nathan on vacation. All right, so the first thing we're gonna go about right now, and I, I promise we're gonna do a bit of background and context and understanding. I think that's important because um, those of us that are tethered to legacy infrastructures, we, we understand the pain, we understand that feeling, we wanna empathize with it, but let's understand um, some of the real costs and impacts and really how we've gotten to where we've gotten to. And I know you'll probably empathize and be like recognizing, yep, I definitely have that sort of pain. Yep, I can feel that impact. But there might be a few others that you might not recognize that are coming across the organization. And because of that, we want to kind of give you a bit of a picture of that uh, so you can really appreciate and understand the value that we can really bring with uh, Citrix Content Collaboration. So first thing we kind of want to touch about is the legacy of legacy systems. So um, Crystal had a really good point. It's it's. One thing, we, we don't want to feel like we're alone. We don't want to feel like when we're watching all these presentations and all these great cloud services and all the other conferences you'll go to, um, you don't really want to feel like I'm the only one that's tethered to these antiquated systems. How am I going to go ahead and get there? But the truth of the matter is you're not alone, which is nice because human beings by nature are pretty tribal. So we like to know that we're, not, we're in it together. So um, recent research is showing that about one in two, almost 50% of enterprises have a majority of their workload and applications deployed within these on-premises uh, infrastructure. But one of the key things we want to talk about today is what's the cost? What's the cost? What's the cost? What's the cost? What is the impact that you guys are feeling because of that? So I won't, won't try to get too ab academic here. I'm sure you've never had an uh, academic um, presentation with someone wearing a shirt like this before. What we want to do is just give a really quick overview of some of these costs and impacts, again, to give you guys that understanding uh, and that empathy as we kind of go forward and present you guys with some great solutions to get out of this. First and foremost, maintenance. Now, I know this, isn't, <laughs> this is definitely not new to anyone here, but um, legacy infrastructure, when it comes to maintenance, um, those are uh, exponentially escalating costs over time. Every customization uh, and every change that you guys do makes your system a little bit more complex. And because of that complex, it becomes more time consuming, it becomes more frustrating, uh, it becomes more costly to try to get to update. Tied in with that notion of context is that idea of support. And with every complexity, um, that the costs continue to rise as well when you got that support. So it can be really caused by that distinct lack of support and that distinct lack of like niche support, particularly with those complex legacy systems you guys have. Uh, and really, uh, we, this really leads to that increase in cost because at the end of the day, we do recognize um, uh, that the increase in cost to try to find the right talent to be able to support those infrastructures. This one, most people don't really think about much, but there is a business opportunity cost tied to um, legacy infrastructures. And I think the easiest way to think about this is you have a lot of data, you have a lot of content that's stored within these systems. Um, and if you could really get to it and harness some data analytics, data uh, reporting tools to be able to feed into things like marketing applications and dashboards and analytics as well as sales ones, you can really start to use that information to the best of your ability to try to move those sales and marketing teams in the right direction. And because you necessarily can't get to that data because of the lack of integration infrastructure, they can really affect your bottom line. Next to that is talent, which of course is tied directly into that notion of maintenance. So um, it not only brings exorbitant maintenance time uh, that these people have to actually start to dig in and understand the complexities with each iteration um, of versioning updates and all the maintenance um, systems you have to keep up to date, but it also requires those really niche skill sets. So 
I think we can all empathize. Once you lose a member of the team, like a lot of institutional knowledge goes with them as well. So when you really have those people that leave, that really understand those systems really well, and when you, when you get them to leave, when they get them to leave, when they leave on their own accord, it can really leave that big gap and you have to try to fill that knowledge gap. I briefly touched on it before, but you guys understand this, integrations. We all want to start moving forward. We all want to start integrating some of the best analytics, data reporting tools, uh, cloud application tools and software. And some of the legacy systems we've got in place today just don't allow those. So um, this is a really big cost and a big, um, big effect that we've chatted to quite a few people in the biz um, uh, this week about. Uh, one of the last ones I want to talk about is compliance. Um, so we understand industry regulations and business laws are constantly changing. You've got to keep up with those. And it really can be costly. And, con and consequently, the cost of keeping those legacy uh, systems compliant is becoming more and more complex. Uh, and the risk, of course, of getting out of compliant based on trying to uh, update too quickly or update infrastructure or even versioning and maintenance coming at you at a rate of knots that you guys can't keep up with certainly adds to the stress and complexity of the system. The last one, I know you've actually been staring at him, but you might have recognized him, that end user. There is a cost to the end user, as you saw with that incredibly painful demonstration of me on the chair on vacation. Um, that end user experience isn't great, particularly when you have to VPN in and you have to send in those files, you try to modernize that content system. So there really is that cost to that end user. And conversely, what we're also seeing is the, the end user's behavior and they're starting moving to unsanctioned applications. They're starting to use tools in a way that you didn't particularly allow or even start harnessing tools you don't want in your system in the first place, potentially taking you out of compliance or opening you up to certain data, data vulnerabilities and risks um, that you've no doubt heard a lot about this week at Synergy. There's a bit of good news, though. So that one slide that I showed you guys before, 46% of um, enterprises um, have a majority of their workloads uh, deployed within on-prem uh, infrastructure today. Within two years, uh, that number dropped down to 20% in terms of who actually anticipates to continue to have that workload um, on those um, on those on-prem. So, I mean, reading that stat myself, I couldn't help but wonder. Like, 25% of them said, "You know what? I'm not going to house a lot of that um, within that within that system." So the question I actually had was. How do they actually plan on achieving this? And um, from, from all accounts and some other cloud services, uh, the, the recommendation you're going to get, let's just pick it up and let's just move it, also known as like a lift and shift um, to moving those uh, data applications and infrastructures to a, a more cloud-orientated um, approach. But it's not really that easy. Um, some of the reports and some of the information we're getting back is data migration. <laughs> It's not necessarily all that successful, and it can be really, really expensive, and it can run absolutely over time and budget. Gardner stat, in and of itself, 83% of data migration projects either fail or exceed their budgets and schedules. You have a large enterprise um, that, with those data migration projects that are taking years and not months, as well as if you're a partner supporting a lot of clients and trying to move them, this can be a really costly and really frustrating and a really, really, really uh, disappointing solution to this problem. So one thing we're going to talk to you guys about today, one thing that Crystal's going to get into uh, in a minute, is the notion of modernization in place. So this one's kind of cool. This is a, um, a notion that, you know what, why do we have to move it? Why can't we keep those critical and core applications and data in place? And why don't we re-architect the, uh, re the systems around them to enable some of those cloud services um, and get those cloud abilities that um, are are the ones that you're hearing about in so many of the sessions and so many of the other conferences you're attending to. So I know this is actually an interesting note when you guys were listening to uh, the keynote with David Henshaw and uh, the new president of Google Cloud, he mentioned Anthos. And if you go to Anthos and you learn about it, it is very much, this is their messaging, modernization in place. We'll come to you. We'll help cloudify these uh, servers and systems you have in place and bring the abilities of cloud and bring those really great technologies to what you currently have. And that is also backed up with statistics. Um, that similar research organization that I like to refer to, uh, 451 Research, they're saying that 44% of these enterprises subscribe to this modernization in place when you're dealing with those mission critical applications. That number down the bottom is why we're talking is the result of all those failed data migration projects. Only 12% of those enterprises said, yep, makes sense, let's pick them up and let's shift them to the cloud. Nathan. Yes. That was a lot. I know it was a lot. It was really academic, so I didn't want to bore them too much. So I try to get through. You've got a lot more cooler stuff to go through. Why don't you take a break? OK. In fact, why don't you take a vacation? OK. All right. I'll head back. I'll All head right. Back. We're sending Nathan back on vacation. Although this time, we're going to send him back to vacation and give him life with modernized content collaboration. Get back in the frame, thanks. And I'll take a break. All right, go back through, looking for this thing again. 
Here's Crystal's text, still calling me Nate. She knows my name's Nathan, although I think she just corrected it a few moments ago when I was on, on stage. Wants to bother me with a mission critical work process, which, look, hey, we've all got mission critical things to work on. Me, I've got a mission critical task to fix this uh, declining beer stock I've got next to me. Okay, I am here, what do you need? So she's gonna go ahead and probably ask me for a file some sort of work process or commenting on something I'm imagining. Go ahead and get that one coming through. Need that prezzo from last week. I appreciate the brevity in the language that she's using so I can get back to what I need to do. I am definitely on PTO and you know that because you approved it. All right, one sec. So let's see how this works. If I got Citrix files connected in, I want to get to my network shares. I got a few different accounts here, but I can go into network shares, second to the bottom, go into that home drive. Find the file that I'm after, go ahead and just get that link. Go ahead and click that one, get a link, go ahead and copy that one right there. Move back to Slack. Go ahead and continue typing along there, replying back. Here's the link that you were after. No worries, super quick. Go ahead and paste that. You're getting a raise. Yep. And you said that last year. Uh, didn't say anything. Better be getting a raise. These vacations are getting expensive. Wrong file. Of course it's the wrong file. Uh, yep. Actually, I think, the, I think the full version of that, again, is on Dropbox. So I'll go ahead and um, go back to the exact same Citrix files. Uh, mobile application I was using before, but this time I'm going to go into personal cloud folder. Uh, go to this Dropbox right there, going to load it up on miscellaneous. I'll go ahead and find, copy that link. Exact same workflow for the end user for me. Looks the exact same. All I need is copy that. Go back over to Slack and drop that link in. Right. I can learn how to type. After a few beers, your typing gets a little out there, doesn't it? Go ahead and paste that link. And you're the best. I know I'm the best. And no worries. Go ahead and fix that type. No worries, and I'll do that times one because I definitely will enjoy the Caymans. And that vacation you could approve. Well done. A lot easier that time. A lot easier. All right. We didn't lose an audience member on that one. Clearly, a whole lot less painful when we had a little bit of a modernized uh, content collaboration, don't we think? Maybe. I'm a product manager. I'm going to keep asking you guys questions, so be prepared <laughs> to answer them. So show of hands again. How many of you have data that's on-premises, those uh, of you that raised your hands before, those network file shares? How many of you have data that's being stored in the cloud? How many of you are using services like Dropbox or Box or OneDrive for Business? How many of you can access all of them from a single pane of glass? Some share file customers, I like <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what we're going to talk about is what you just saw there. So obviously, way less painful. Nate never had to leave the beach, and he got to get his work done. So imagine you're in that same scenario, you're at your kid's soccer game. How much better if you could actually get your work done in about two minutes instead of 20? So what we gave, uh, what the technology that we saw here was the choice, the flexibility to be able to access all of the files that he accessed before but had to go to his hotel room and open up his laptop and log into a bunch of different things. He was able to do all of that from a singular app there, no matter where it was. He was sitting on a beach. And he was using his own mobile device. We didn't make him VPN or do any of these things. And we didn't run into that issue again with the file size limitation. So before we had to compress files, no longer an issue. What you didn't see was in the background was the security. So of course that's important to us and we have to have security with everything. So it's nice that he's sending these secure links rather than the file themselves. Those of course are going to be encrypted with 256-bit encryption in transit, of course. And we're also capturing those events by emitting any type of user activity that he has to Citrix Analytics Service. Now we have a full audit trail and reporting on everything that he's doing there. So even though he's still using Dropbox, which gross, ew, Dropbox, at least now as an IT professional, I have visibility that he's doing that and that he's sending those things. Whereas before he was just logging into his account from a browser and I had no idea what was going on. 
And then it goes without saying, and that was a much better user experience for Nathan, like I said. He didn't have to get off the beach. Mobile access, he had access to all of the things that he needed from one app. He didn't have to go bouncing around. So how do we do that? With flexibility, again, we're always talking about choice. And so the technology that you saw behind that, the things that he was doing, was that he was accessing connectors using storage zones to access them on premises. He was using what we call personal cloud connectors to access his uh, Dropbox account there. And we give him the flexibility to access all of these different repositories within Workspace or Citrix Files app um, from any app. So he's going to have the same experience, access to the same files, no matter what device he's using. So if he's using his laptop, or he's using his phone, he's on the iPad, he's using an Android device, it doesn't matter. He has access to all of these different things. He can share, he can preview, he can download, and again, all of the security behind it. So for the security, there's been lots of sessions on Citrix Analytics Service, but I do want to address it because I think it's just the neatest feature here. Right now, if you have disparate systems, everything is in all of these different uh, locations. It's very difficult for IT to gain visibility into it. And even if they do, if we're, if we're exporting everything into Splunk, what we end up doing with Google Analytics and things like that is we're looking at these charts and someone has to man this. I don't know what your IT department is, but is there someone that's all the time looking at the security analytics of what's being shared and what's coming in and out of the system? Probably not. If you are, I don't know what kind of industry you're in. That's really weird. But with Citrix Analytics Service, we're actually building models around your employee users. So the, fi so the files that employee A is sharing, we have you know, a, a profile for that person. We know what's normal. Someone else uses content collaboration in a completely different way, and we have a model for that person. And we have these behaviors, so when something strange happens, when there's some anon uh, an anomalous activity where someone who usually shares about 10 files a week has suddenly shared 10,000 documents, we know something is weird. And instead of someone sitting in front of a screen looking at charts and graphs and being like, is this strange? Is this something I should look at? We're actually building the behavior models so that we will come to you and tell you something strange is happening and you need to pay attention. So that's going to free up your security people from like having to look at these audits and these reports because they're being contacted and told there was excessive access to this file that we've already marked as sensitive. You need to take action and we're going to build in those actions for you. So let's disable that user that's doing some strange things until we can reach out to them and find out what's happening. Or this file is super sensitive and it went to 10,000 people, let's reduce all of the risk that happens with that by expiring those links immediately. So when people start trying to access it, it doesn't work. Pretty nice, right? Pretty easy. Awesome. What's great about it, too, is we're putting this secure digital perimeter around all of these files, so it's not just files that are stored in content collaboration, but actually all of the ones that we're setting up with a connector. So we're extend extending those capabilities into places where you don't have visibility today. You don't have visibility into Nathan's Dropbox account, but if you give him access through the workspace and you say, feel free to access these files in Dropbox, but just access them the way that we tell you to access them, which is through the workspace, and now you have the reporting and the access and the controls over it. So the end user experience, do I even have to talk about it anymore? How awesome was that that he got his work done in a minute instead of that very painful five minute demo that we had before? So I've been loving these keynotes and all of these sessions that I've been going to about the intelligent experience with Workspace, but you know, we may not be ready for that. Whereas this is something you can utilize tomorrow. And this is the first step of giving users productivity back. We're also giving them their PTO back. So again, wrapping up what we saw here with flexibility, the technology behind it is on-prem connectors, which is utilized with storage zone controllers, and it hooks into that existing infrastructure. We're not telling, we know that you have those network file shares, those home drives, everybody has them. We're telling you don't bother moving it. Nathan said 83% of those migrations either go way over budget, they're super behind on schedule, or they just straight up fail. You just give up because you're like, this is never gonna work. So keep that data there if you, wanted to, if you want to. Leave it there, give people access to it, build features on, rebuild the features, then you just get them. So we build the features on top, so now that it's better. Um, and then we also give them access to the data that's elsewhere. OneDrive for Business, give them access to that right next to that network file share connector. Don't make them sign into a bunch of different things all the time and go 15 different places, like an archeological dig for your data. Just give them all their data in one spot. 
The security is a benefit for everyone. The security, uh, the Citrix Analytics Service with the connected repository so that everything is being monitored in the same way is a huge benefit of adding security onto your content within the workspace. And that end user experience of the unified sharing solution is pretty awesome. Did you enjoy it, Nathan? Pretty much. You obviously saw that I did. <laughs> I think it's pretty great that you can access your files from any device wherever you are. I can't imagine being at this conference and any time I needed to access a file that I had to open up my laptop and I had to log in and do all of these things. So hopefully you guys gathered that and it's something that you guys are looking forward to, excited to use. Would that help you guys in your everyday life instead of having to VPN to access your network file shares? I see heads nodding. That's great. So no matter where you are, web, desktop, mobile, we're giving you that unified experience. And it's really important for end users is that no matter where they go, everything is the same, uh, giving them access to all of those different things. And then, yeah. Yeah, and, go ahead. yeah we just wanted to reinforce, this is, the, this is that introductory session, so we wanted to modernize that legacy infrastructure. So when you're really tying back into some of the messages we just talked about before, this is the introduction to the technology that exists within Citrix Content Collaboration. And so from a high level, we're giving you an understanding of how, what the technology looks like from an end user perspective, giving you some high level detail into what the intent behind it and the ability and function and value that we can deliver to you guys across the technology sets that you guys have. So this is actually it for the high level state um, of this chat, this chat we are having with you guys today. If you, before you leave, um, some recommended breakout sessions um, for you guys. Synergy 141 is how the intelligent Citrix workspace organizes, guides, and automates work. That one's today at 4 o'clock. And so as we said, this is like that first high level, how to modernize that legacy infrastructure. And then once you've got that legacy infrastructure modernized, start in, uh, enforcing some of those collaboration features and security policies. And then you can start moving into that intelligent workspace. This is very much a foundation for you guys uh, as you move forward. Um, with your Citrix journey. The other sessions, unfortunately, because this is Thursday at two o'clock and you guys have made it this far, so one, congrats, and two, those sessions have actually already happened, but if you wanna take a picture of them, you'll be able to access those um, beginning Wednesday, May 22nd. You can go ahead and either watch those as well as download the presentations starting on June the 3rd. So those are some related presentations um, we thought you guys would be interested in. If you like this session, if you enjoy Nathan on the Beach, feel free to rate us <laughs> and also get your points if you're playing the game, game on. Um, and now we'd like to take some questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to use the microphone in the middle. You guys are a shy group. <laughs> we know it's sessions. Thursday. We know we're looking forward to happy hour towards the end of the day. But seriously, if there's any questions you guys had before you came in today, um, feel free to jump up on the microphone, or we're going to hang out here for a few minutes afterwards as well. Uh, more than happy to help you all. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you.